Whether it's Thursday or not when you are seeing this, we are gonna have a little throwback. I have been on YouTube for over five years. I have over 500 videos on my channel. And in today's video, I went back at least two years to some of my older videos and I picked out 10 recipes or tips that I really liked and that I wanna share again because maybe you're new and you haven't seen these yet or even if you have, maybe they'll just be a good reminder. So let's throw it back. The first recipe that I want to share with you guys is a buffalo chicken tortellini and man was this fantastic everybody really liked this it produced a couple helpings of leftovers we ate it all i will definitely be making it again and here are the ingredients that i'm using um, i'm going to use about two or three chicken breasts some buffalo sauce some minced garlic you would need a packet of ranch dressing mix but i make mine from scratch you can find a video in my description box that tells you how i do that so i'm going to use a couple tablespoons of that salt and pepper to taste cream cheese shredded cheddar cheese and tortellini which we will add later and then some chicken broth so i'm actually going to put the chicken breast in the bottom of the crock pot add a couple teaspoons of minced garlic salt and pepper to taste and then I used about two tablespoons, one and a half to two tablespoons of my homemade ranch seasoning. And then I used about half of a bottle of buffalo sauce. That's just what I happened to have left. So it was probably about a half to three quarters of a cup of buffalo sauce. And I'm also going to add some chicken broth, but instead of using chicken broth, I just use this broth base and then I add the appropriate, the appropriate amount of water. So I used about one tablespoon of this broth base and then I added three cups of water and I made sure that my half a block of cream cheese was sitting on top of the rest of my ingredients because I just want it to get soft in the cooking process and I can stir it in later. So I popped the lid on that and I'm gonna cook that on high for about three to four hours. You could cook this on low for six to seven hours just until your chicken is done cooking. I took the chicken out and I shredded that up because I'm gonna put that back in um, in a little bit, but I wanted to take it out and shred it up. And I stirred the cream cheese into the rest of the ingredients. And then I added one bag of frozen tortellini. This is a 19 ounce bag of cheese tortellini. I find these at my Walmart for less than $3 a bag and they're useful in so many different recipes. So I'm gonna just stir those into the crock pot along with the other ingredients and just kind of make sure that they are submerged in the liquid that's in the crock pot. I didn't add my chicken back in yet. I'm gonna just set that aside. I'm gonna pop the lid back on this and let it cook for about 30 minutes. And then I will add my chicken back in, stir it all together and add some shredded cheese. And I actually went ahead and just added the shredded cheese to everybody's plate. Um, so that they could put the amount of cheese in that they wanted. I used a sharp cheddar. I'm sure that a Monterey Jack would be really good in this. A pepper jack if you want even more of a kick if the buffalo sauce doesn't give it a good kick. I really think this would be good with lots of different kinds of cheese. I had some of the tortellini with some a, a sprinkling of cheddar cheese on top and I just served this with broccoli. And as I said, everybody liked this. It was really flavorful, so easy. I will definitely be making this again. It was a winner. Okay, so here are the ingredients, pretty simple. I've got a pound of ground beef here. I'm sure you could use a little less if you wanted to. I would normally cut this in half, but I'm gonna go ahead and use the whole pound tonight. I've got one can of diced tomatoes, a few cloves of garlic and half of a yellow onion one packet of Lipton onion soup mix, salt and pepper to taste, one and a half cups of water. I'm actually gonna put this in the microwave. This is in a glass container, so I'm gonna pop it in the microwave because it calls for hot water. And then three quarters of a cup of white rice, and at the end, we'll top it with a cup of shredded cheddar cheese. I started out by chopping my onions and garlic and I added those to the pot with the ground beef so it could brown all together. And as soon as that was done browning, I just added the rest of my ingredients except for the cheese. So I added my can of diced tomatoes, my onion soup mix, a little bit of pepper. I decided not to use very much salt in this because I felt like the onion soup mix was salty enough on its own. My rice and then my one and a half cups of of hot water. I made sure that I micro microwaved that water so that it was hot whenever I added it to the pan. I brought that to a simmer and gave it a stir and then I 
popped the lid on and I turned the heat down to low. I let mine cook for about 15 minutes and then I turned the heat completely off but I left the lid on for another 10 minutes or so to allow the rice to continue steaming and cooking. And once that time had passed, I went ahead and sprinkled the cheese on the top and then I put the lid back on for just a couple minutes to allow the cheese to melt and then it was ready to serve. That was it. I mean, this was a super easy meal. I served it alongside just some good old canned green beans and a little bit of toast. And this made fabulous leftovers the next day as well. This meal came together very quickly. It probably only took about 10 minutes of total work altogether, and it was ready to eat in less than 30 minutes. So I will definitely be making this one again. This recipe is just a really easy toasted sandwich that I made with sourdough bread and pesto and fresh tomatoes and mozzarella. So I guess it's kind of like a basil caprese grilled cheese sandwich type situation. I really like using sourdough bread for grilled cheese type sandwiches and for other things just because I think it's really delicious and makes really great toast. And then I have a jar of pesto sauce and two little Roma tomatoes, some mozzarella cheese, and some butter. So I just chopped up my tomatoes. I take the center part out of them that has all the seeds and stuff in them, and then I chop them up into little pieces, and I shredded just a little bit of my block of mozzarella cheese. And you could definitely do sliced tomatoes instead of diced tomatoes. I just find that I can disperse them more evenly across my sandwich, and for some reason, I just prefer them that way. I just don't really care for sliced tomatoes that much. I'm really lazy about making grilled cheese sandwiches and I just assemble them right on my griddle. So I just put the butter on the griddle and then I put two pieces of bread and I spread the pesto sauce on top and then I'm going to put some cheese and some of my diced tomatoes. You could use a different kind of cheese if you wanted. In fact, I just made these sandwiches for my husband and myself that night and I just made like regular grilled cheese sandwiches for the kids. So this is another like really versatile one. If you have some picky eaters, you could make these for you or for the adults in your house and then you could make just a regular old grilled cheese sandwich for your kiddos. Um, but this is the way I made them for my husband and myself. And I did just salt and pepper the tomatoes just a little bit. So I have bread, pesto, mozzarella, tomatoes, a little bit more mozzarella just to help the bread to stick a little bit and then I put some more pesto on one side of my other slice of bread and put it on top of each of my sandwiches and when those were ready to flip I just flipped them um, you could certainly do these on the stove if you wanted to if you have you know just a skillet that you're cooking them in I don't mind using my griddle in the summer because it doesn't have to be on for long it heats up quickly and I don't feel like it heats up my kitchen the way that the stove and the oven do. So I just served mine with a little fresh fruit. I had some cottage cheese on the side with some more fresh tomatoes, salt and pepper, and that was it. Like I said, these were really good, very delicious. I can highly recommend these. We love them. Now, I know you guys are probably familiar with the faux ice cream sandwiches that you can make with graham crackers and Cool Whip. You just put a little Cool Whip between two graham crackers and freeze it, and then it has sort of the same consist consistency as an ice cream sandwich. Considering the fact that graham crackers are 99 cents at my Aldi and I can get a carton of whipped topping for like 90 cents at Aldi or Walmart. That makes for a really inexpensive snack. But if you want to take it up a notch, put a little peanut butter on the graham cracker and then put the Cool Whip between the two graham crackers and freeze it that way. Or you can make the Cool Whip graham cracker sandwich and then roll the sides of it in little mini chocolate chips. And that gives you a couple of different options for kind of taking it up to the next level. Okay, you guys, this is basically it. This recipe is chicken broth, a package of ranch dressing mix. And normally I make this myself, but when I opened up my refrigerator and looked at my little jar that I keep my homemade mix in, um, I didn't have enough for this recipe. So thankfully I had one of these hanging out in my pantry. So I'll just use that today. A tablespoon of minced garlic, one package of cream cheese, one eight ounce block of cream cheese. Sometimes I just use half and four cups of chicken broth, but I usually just use four cups of water and then I add a tablespoon or two of this broth base in there. That's basically it. You throw that into the crock pot and you cook it until the chicken's done and then you shred it up. And I always put the cream cheese just right on top so that it gets soft and melty and it's easy to stir in. And then you come back to the crock pot after that's done and you throw in eight ounces of spaghetti and let it cook on high for another 30 minutes and voila, you have some creamy ranch chicken spaghetti in the crock pot. Mm -hmm. 
Now I'm getting a little bit of a late start on this today, so I'm actually gonna let it cook on high for about 90 minutes to two hours, and then I will bump it down to low for the rest of the time until I'm ready to add in the pasta. That's a trick I use sometimes with crock pot recipes if I'm getting a late start, because I would normally cook things on low. I mean, it is a slow cooker. I want things to cook slow, but if I'm pressed for time, I'll cook it on high for a little while just to give it a jump start, and then I'll bump it down to low to finish cooking. <laughs> Okay, so the chicken is done cooking. I have shredded it up and I've stirred in the cream cheese and it's not much to look at right now, but now I'm going to add eight ounces of spaghetti. I weighed this out on my scale so that it would be, you know, close to eight ounces, but that's about half of a one pound box. And I just go ahead and make sure that it's submerged. That's why I like to go ahead and break the spaghetti up into small pieces, but I'm gonna make sure that that is kind of submerged in all of the liquid. And I'm gonna put the lid back on and let it cook on high until the noodles are done. This meal is a creamy ranch, turkey sausage and broccoli gnocchi. I have two packages of gnocchi right there, two crowns of broccoli, one cup of chicken broth, which I don't buy in a carton anymore, so I just made mine from broth base and water, some minced garlic, some Parmesan, half a stick or four tablespoons of butter, um, some minced onion, some smoked turkey sausage and a little bit of half and half. And that is my homemade ranch seasoning that you saw me showing there, but you could use a packet if you want to. So I'm just gonna give my broccoli a quick chop along with my turkey sausage. And I have water boiling on the stove already. And like I said, one of the great things about gnocchi that I didn't know is that it cooks in like two to three minutes. It takes longer for the water boil than it does for it to cook. So once my water is boiling, I'm adding my gnocchi and my broccoli to the uh, pasta water. And it is going to cook for probably about three minutes, I think is about how long it took mine. But on the instructions, it says that when the gnocchi starts to rise to the top, that means that it is done. So once it was finished, I just drained it and um, set it aside until I'm ready to add it to my sauce. So while my broccoli and gnocchi are cooking on the stove, I am making up my sauce. I melted my butter in my pot there, and then I added some minced garlic and a little bit of dried minced onion. You absolutely could use fresh, fresh chopped onion. I just didn't wanna take the time to chop it this day. And then I am adding probably about two tablespoons of my homemade ranch seasoning. You could just use a packet of ranch seasoning if you want, and one cup of my chicken broth. If you want to know how I make my homemade ranch seasoning, I have a video that is linked in the description box below that shows you how it's made from powdered buttermilk. I am now adding my chopped turkey sausage there and probably about a quarter cup to a third of a cup of Parmesan. I didn't really measure it. I just kind of put, I just eyeballed it. I put as much as I thought I wanted in there and gave that a stir. I let it simmer on the stove so it would thicken up a little bit. And here's what it looks like after it has simmered for a few minutes. I wanted it to be a little bit runny because I know that um, once I add my broccoli and my gnocchi back in, I wanna be able to coat my broccoli and my gnocchi with all of the sauce. And here's what it looks like, all plated up. This was really, really good and it made a lot. I probably could have just used one package of gnocchi. This made a lot of leftovers, which we were able to eat for lunches the next few days. But everybody liked this, even my son, who says he doesn't like potatoes. So I say that is a win. Tonight's dinner is a five ingredient taco tortellini. I'm actually gonna make this in the crock pot. I will pop up the ingredients right now and I am going to use ground beef. I'd actually plan to use ground turkey but I didn't get it out of the freezer in time. So I'm gonna use ground beef instead. I was at the store today, so I just picked up some and it's already thawed. I'm also going to use two cans of Rotel. You could use regular tomatoes if you're not a fan of Rotel. I'm gonna use one package of taco seasoning because I am out currently of my homemade taco seasoning and I don't wanna take the time to make it right this second. And I'm also gonna use three cups of beef broth, which I actually just make from broth base. I use about one and a half tablespoons of my broth base powder and then about three cups of water. So I'm gonna brown my ground beef and then I'm gonna put it in the crock pot along with the taco seasoning, the beef broth, and the tomatoes. I'm gonna let that cook on low, just kind of simmer together for a couple of hours. And then I will come back about 30 minutes before we're ready to eat it. And I'm going to add a 19 ounce bag of cheese tortellini. And after, you know, 15, 20 minutes when the tortellini is done cooking, it will be ready to eat. Really easy. Dinner tonight is going to be garlic Parmesan turkey meatballs. And this is what is going into the crock pot right now. I have a small onion chopped. I'll also throw in a couple of spoonfuls of this minced garlic. 
um, a bag of fully cooked turkey meatballs. This is a two pound bag, some salt and pepper to taste about a tablespoon of this broth base and a cup and a half of water. And then I'm going to throw in these two Parmesan rinds that I have in the fridge. These are great for flavoring things. So I just thought I'd use those up by tossing them into the crock pot with this. I'm gonna cook that on high for a couple of hours and then I will come back and show you uh, what else I'm doing to complete this. Okay, so my meatballs have been cooking for heating up for about two and a half hours. So now I have here a cup and a half of half and half, and I'm gonna add a tablespoon of cornstarch to that and stir it up and add it to my crock pot. And now I'm going to add some freshly grated Parmesan cheese. This is probably about a cup. I had about half of one rind and about a quarter of another rind. So I just, you know, used up what I had. And that's what I am putting in here. I'm gonna give that a stir and let it heat through probably about 20 to 30 minutes or so, and then it should be ready to serve. Okay, I think this is just about ready to eat. Yummy, it smells amazing. I am just having some green beans with this. I actually sauteed these green beans, so that's why they're a little bit charred. I actually like them that way whenever I saute them. I had planned to serve this over spaghetti squash for my husband and myself. I made the noodles for the kiddos. When I sliced up my spaghetti squash to put in the oven to roast, um, it was not good. So I actually had some riced cauliflower in the freezer and I went ahead and popped that into the microwave. So there's a little bit of riced cauliflower underneath my meatballs and sauce. And then I have a little bit of pasta as well. To make the strawberry cheesecake mousse, I am going to use one box of cheesecake flavored Jello, one and a quarter cups of milk. Normally the box calls for two cups. We only need one and a quarter cup because we're gonna add some whipped topping to it. This is one eight ounce container. I have a pound of strawberries, which I washed and then chopped up. So they're already chopped up, ready to go. And then these are just some vanilla cookies. You could use golden Oreos if you want. I just bought the really inexpensive kind that come in a package at Walmart, I think for like $1.48. I actually really like these. And I remember eating these for snacks at like Sunday school and like Girl Scout meetings and stuff like that whenever we were growing up. I'm going to actually put these into a Ziploc bag, a big Ziploc bag, and just give them a crush with the rolling pin. And then they'll be ready to use as well. You wanna start by mixing together the pudding mix. And this is an instant pudding. By the way, I don't know why you couldn't use sugar-free pudding if you wanted to and sugar-free Cool Whip for this. You need to use dairy milk though with pudding mixes. I think it even says on the box somewhere, it, it does not work very well with plant-based milks if, if memory serves me correct. Now I'm just going to fold in my eight ounce container of Cool Whip. You don't wanna use the mixer on this because whenever I've made that mistake in the past, sometimes the Cool Whip will liquefy. So you just wanna kind of fold it in while the pudding is still setting up. If you mix the pudding for too long and it gets really thick, then it's a little harder to fold in the Cool Whip. So I recommend just about 90 seconds or so, just until you start to notice it thickening. It will continue to thicken with the Cool Whip in here. At this point, you could make it really easy and you could just put your strawberries on top, put your cookie crumbs on top of that, pop a lid on it and put it in the refrigerator for a couple of hours to set up and then you could just spoon it out and serve it that way. I'm going to go a little bit of a different route. Okay, so I have all of my mousse right here in the Ziploc bag and I cut the tip off of it here. And then I just have some little plastic cups like this and I'm just gonna go ahead and like pipe some down in the bottom there. And now I'm going to add just a few strawberries and some of my vanilla cookie crumbs. And I'm gonna finish off with a little bit more of the mousse here, just like that. Now I'm gonna leave these like this for now, but I am going to reserve just a few strawberries and a few of my cookie crumbs because we're gonna finish these up a little later. So I'm gonna make up the rest of these and I'm gonna put them in a tray and pop them into the refrigerator for a couple of hours and I'll show you how we're gonna finish these up. I wasn't quite able to get seven. I probably should have just gone for six or you could just fill these up a little bit less and you could probably stretch it to eight, but it's not gonna matter because of the way that I finish these off. I'll be able to kind of hide the fact that this one doesn't have any of the mousse on top. So I really feel like these would probably be best if you let them set up in the refrigerator overnight. But I mean, it's 401 and we're going to eat these tonight. So they're probably going to have about three hours or so to set up before I finish them off and we eat them for dessert. By the way, I did start this recipe at 345 because I remember looking at the clock so that I would know how much time I have before I need to go pick up a, a child from swim and drop another one off. It only took me 16 minutes to make these and that was with stopping and talking with you guys, you know, and giving some explanation. So if you need something that doesn't take a lot of time to prepare, 
this is probably a good one. So to finish these off, I am just going to top these with a little bit of this whipped topping here. Sprinkle on a few more strawberries here and some more cookies. And there you have it. Don't those look good? Yum. Ooh, yum. Okay, these are fantastic. <laughs> McKenna is dying to dive into one. She's actually finishing up her dinner because she just got home from a practice. So she has to do that before she has one of these, but she's already called dibs on the one that she wants. These are so good and so easy. And I imagine you can change up the flavors according to, you know, what flavor of instant pudding you want to use, or maybe experiment with some different kinds of fruit or something, but really easy, so delicious. Full disclosure, the meal that I am preparing for tonight is one that we have had before and we enjoyed it so much that I'm making it again. It is a crock pot pepper jack beef and noodles and I actually prepped this in my last Lazy Day Cooking Club freezer prep video that I did for you guys and like I said we enjoyed it so much. Everybody liked it. The kids liked it. The husband liked it. I liked it. Um, we enjoyed it so much that I'm making it again. So I actually already have my ground beef here in the pot browning. I'm going to put that into the crock pot along with some diced onion and minced garlic, a can of diced tomatoes with green chilies, a can of tomato sauce. And because I do not have pepper jack cheese, I thought I had pepper jack cheese, but when I took it out of the refrigerator, it was moldy. So real life, sometimes that happens, guys. It happens to us all. I'm going to improvise and instead I'm gonna use just a little bit of crushed red pepper and some diced green pepper, which I have in my fridge and needed to use up anyway and salt and pepper, and then I will add three cups of beef broth, but I do not buy beef broth, I just use broth base with the appropriate amount of water. So I'll add three cups of water and probably about a tablespoon and a half of broth base. I will let that cook on low for about five hours or so, and then I will come back and add my bag of egg noodles, let those cook about 20 minutes, and then stir in some cheese, and I will show you guys what it looks like when it's done. It was fantastic the last time we had it, so I'm looking forward to having it again. And here it is, all plated up. It turned out fantastic. I actually think it tastes even better with the fresh green pepper in there. I'm just serving this with a side of roasted veggies, but this was a hit again. It smelled delicious as it was cooking. It was easy just to toss in the noodles at the end. So um, this is a winner for me. More fun content coming your way soon. Until then, check out this video and I'll see you there.